I'm here today to talk to you mostly about hemp, but more importantly, how hemp could help build a new agricultural economy in the coal fields of eastern Kentucky. I don't think it's the end-all be-all for addressing the region's economic woes, but I think it could play a significant role. People in the hollers of Appalachia could earn up to $20,000 a year from growing just one acre of CBD hemp. This is huge in a region where people have to drive up to an hour for just minimum wage work from the remote back roads where they often live. They could be trained and provided with everything they need to produce a successful crop year after year by a company producing high value hemp products in the region. We can stay grounded to the place we're all a part of while reusing ground that too often goes forgotten and neglected. Humans have been using hemp for thousands of years for food, fiber, and medicine. It is related to marijuana, but it has no more than 0.3% THC and therefore can't get you high. The food and fiber varieties require vast acreages of flat land to be grown profitably, but the medicinal varieties can be grown profitably in much smaller acreages, although it takes a lot more handwork. CBD, or cannabidiol, is a molecule found mostly in the flowers of hemp plants, and it produces a wide range of health benefits. Medicines containing CBD can be prescribed for nerve conditions such as epilepsy, and a wide range of over-the-counter products are out there, and they produce a mix of calming, focusing, and pain relieving effects. My conservative aunt, who would never smoke pot, swears by CBD lotion for arthritis. And, a whole, and even CBD dog treats are out there for our neurotic furry friends. <laughs> <laughs> the market for CBD products is projected to explode from about a half a billion dollar market last year to up to a $22 billion market by 2022. As you may know, eastern Kentucky isn't exactly known for vast acreages of flat land like we have in central or western Kentucky or the Midwest U.S. What we do have are small but fertile bottomland fields in the hollers between the hills, and I think these could be the jumping off point for having a high value ag economy in the region. CBD hemp is different than other options we've had for these lands in the past because the profit margins are much higher than for vegetables or hay, and it doesn't deplete the soil like tobacco once did. I believe CBD hemp could create a host of economic benefits for the region, and I hope I'm in a good position to help get that ball rolling. I wasn't always the Appalachian hemp guy. Um, I left my hillside home in Floyd County, Kentucky, as soon as I was legally able to pursue my teenage dreams of being an indie rock musician and a bike messenger in the big city of Louisville, Kentucky. I quickly found that the tall buildings and people everywhere thing really wasn't for me, but not before being exposed to several ideas that had never been in front of me back home. Soon books about organic farming, renewable energy, and the impacts of industrialized society were filling my bookshelves. And even though I refused to go to college full time, I became very self-educated on these and other issues. But soon I found myself being very grounded as I moved back home to Eastern Kentucky and took a job as an underground coal miner. I figured I could save up my paychecks for a few years, eventually start a business combining organic farming with renewable energy. I actually enjoyed my time in the mines, but I got off to a little bit of a rocky start, no pun intended. Um, on my first day of work, an uh, older miner had to help me figure out how to hook up the self-rescuer and light battery to my reflective safety belt. A somewhat less friendly feller threatened to punch me in the mouth if I tried to kiss him because he heard I was a bit of a softy. Um, <laughs> Soon enough, I proved my worth through a few weeks of grueling belt shoveling and setting timbers, and I found that there was a camaraderie and subconscious bond between miners that was unlike any other job I've had before or since. But I couldn't keep ignoring the pleas of my grandparents to get out of the mines and go to college. And even an older coworker took me aside and told me if he could have gone to college, he would have, and if I was his boy, he'd be telling me to get out of there. The six months I spent in the mines left quite an impression on me. I already knew I wanted to go into producing sustainable business projects, but uh, that really drove home that I needed to do it in a way that people like the ones I'd just been working with could plug into later on. CBD hemp didn't immediately jump out as a really great option for the region. I didn't even know about it then. Uh, first, I went to Berea College right up the road here in Kentucky. I did a self-designed bachelor's in sustainable agricultural and industrial management. I also worked on the college farm and built a biodiesel system. I've been traveling about 13 countries across Europe, Asia, and Central America, always in places with a lot of parallels to Appalachia and always with an eye toward ideas that could work back home. 
I reforested about a thousand acres of strip mine mountaintops with a mix of native hardwood trees and blight resistant American chestnuts through the nonprofit Green Forest Work. I was a farmer for the first couple years in the Kentucky Hemp Pilot Program, and I was also going to Yale at the time where I earned a couple master's degrees. I was in the middle of developing new techniques for converting the rocky, compacted land left after strip mining into tillable farm soil when I got a call out of the blue from a Kentucky filmmaker living in New York City. He'd been doing some film work in the mountains of Letcher County, Kentucky, and he was wondering if anybody in Appalachia had been thinking about tapping into the growing hemp market since he'd been seeing CBD products blowing up in Brooklyn coffee shops and Manhattan boutiques. I had been, but I lacked the capital to really get anything off the ground. Soon we were starting a business, filing permit paperwork, and finding farmers and sites to work with for our CBD startup, Pine Mountain Remedies. At the end of the day, I want to make money, but I want to do it in a way that allows me to stay grounded in the place that my family's been in for 10 generations, and I want to be close to the ground with the work I'm doing. But I want a lot of other people in the haulers to be able to make money too, and I want us to all be able to stay grounded to the place we're all a part of. CBD hemp allows us to generate significant value from pretty small fields, and we can keep that value here in the mountains if we produce the high-value products right here. The skills needed to be a coal miner are very transferable to intensive farming, and I think CBD could be the tip of the spear that opens the gates to having a high-value ag economy in the region. The CBD boom probably won't last forever, and I think we should look to diversifying into other high-value crops that we can process here sooner than later. And I'd like to come back around to reusing those thousands of acres of strip mine lands and turning them into sustainable farm sites with a mix of hemp, orchards, herbs, and solar. Right now we have a mix of assets in the region that could be really productive if organized in the right way. We have good quality land, hardworking people that want to work, and a market that we're in a great position to tap into. I believe we can create an Appalachia that allows us to stay grounded and builds a new vibrant future from the ground up. And I think CBD hemp is a great way to get that ball rolling. Thank you for your time.